Hey guys, Keith with Grey Guns here. Today I'm going to go over the install of the ELS system for the P226 and 229. The ELS system is a great system to install on both the competition as well as a duty carry piece. Um, just with the swap of a trigger and trigger bar, we can reduce the weight of the double action by about 20%. The single action is going to be around 10 to 15%. Depending on where your gun uh, starts with its weight, um, you'll get a little bit more, a little bit less. Some guns have come in double actions well over 12 pounds, and we can get that down pretty low. Um, if you throw in some spring changes with the ELS kit, we can even reduce the weight of both trigger pulls even more. Um, so let's get into it. First, what we're going to do is we're going to ensure that the gun is safe. We're going to lock the slide to the rear both visually and physically inspect the firearm for any ammunition or magazines. Um, after that, we're going to remove the slide. We won't need the slide for this, uh, this video. Um, we can set that aside. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove both the left and the right grip panels. Um, in doing so, we're going to check. Once we remove the right side, we're going to check to see if this gun is a DAK or non-DAK frame. SIG has gone back and forth a few times on their changes, so it doesn't matter when your gun was made or what uh, trigger system you have in it currently, it could be DAK or non-DAK. We do have pictures on the website illustrating um, the DAK and the non-DAK cut frames. It's a little bit trickier to see it without a comparison, but I'll show you guys here in a second. Let me set the grips aside. This gun, we can see, is a DAK cut frame. A DAK cut frame is going to have an extra cut right here along the back side. This wall is going to be a little thinner to allow for the uh, DAK trigger bar. Um, if your wall thickness from here to here is about the same, then you do have a non-DAK. So order accordingly. If you order the wrong one, we'll absolutely take care of you and get it all fixed up. So after we remove the slide and the grip panels, what we're gonna do is we're gonna decock the firearm. We never wanna let the hammer drop against the sear. You can damage the sear, the hammer, the frame. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the takedown lever out of the firearm, set that aside, and we will remove the locking insert. The locking insert will not come out if the hammer is cocked. After we remove the locking insert, we're going to remove the trigger bar spring. We're going to remove the trigger axle. And now we can take the slide stop off. And now we can get the trigger and trigger bar out by just wiggling the trigger over to its side and removing the trigger and trigger bar. Now this gun already has an ELS installed, so I will go ahead and reassemble it. What we are going to do is um, adjust the pre-travel and the over-travel. On these guns, um, or on our triggers, all the dual adjustables have a pre-travel and over-travel adjustment. This front screw is your over-travel adjustment screw. So this top screw is your over-travel adjustment. The long screw that's ex accessible in the back of the trigger that goes through the length of the trigger this way is your pre-travel adjustment screw. So now what we can do is we can get into the install. All you're going to do is take your trigger and trigger bar and put them together. Trigger bar goes in the top hole. We're going to insert the trigger bar behind the safety lever. Just like that. And then we're going to pivot our trigger down and into the trigger slot. We'll get that in there. Next we can install our slide lock lever. And then on our uh, trigger axle pin, there are two slots cut into one side. These two slots are going to be facing down and a little bit forward when the firearm is uh, reassembled. So keep note, make sure they're not facing up. So 
we will go ahead and install this. We'll make sure we have our slide lock lever captured. As you can see, let's see if you the slots are facing down in the frame. So we'll go ahead and push a little bind going. We'll go ahead and push our hammer axle all the way through. You're able to see those slots from the front of the gun. So make sure that those are facing down and just a little bit forward. Your hammer axle pin will be in about that position when you reinstall the locking insert. After we get the uh, hammer axle installed, we will reinstall our trigger bar spring. First, we will go into the frame and then under the back of the trigger bar. This is the point at which I like to test our, or adjust the over travel. So in adjusting over travel, we're gonna cock the hammer. I like choking up on the trigger quite a bit. And we can pull the trigger very slowly while holding the hammer. And just when the gun goes off, I'll let the hammer down and then I'll pull the trigger the rest of the way. That movement right there is your over travel. See here if I can show you guys. Right there. Pulling the trigger just a little bit. If it breaks right there, that much is over travel. So we have quite a bit of over travel in this gun. The easiest way to adjust your over travel is going to be this top screw. We're going to righty tighty. So we're going to turn it in. Cock the gun, pull the trigger, gun still goes off. So I still have some more room to go. Cock the hammer, pull the trigger, still drops. We go a little bit more. It still drops just barely. So I'll go a little bit more. The gun no longer fires while pulling the trigger. Now we will back this Allen wrench off slowly, just a little bit at a time, until the hammer wants to fall. Okay, after I get to that point, I'll take my Allen wrench and I'll point it straight up. And I'll usually go about a quarter, maybe sometimes a little bit less, a uh, quarter of a turn. So we go right there and your over travel set. Now when the gun goes off, the trigger does not move. It moves just a little bit. We want to ensure that we have enough over travel for function. Um, if any dirt, debris gets in there, we want to make sure that the gun will go off. But we got rid of all that gross over travel. Next, what I'll do is I'm going to adjust for pre-travel. Pre-travel is uh, the distance the trigger travels before it engages the hammer. So in this condition, we can pull the trigger and we can see that much wink in that trigger. That's all of our pre-travel that we're going to get rid of right here. So I'll cock the hammer. Pull the trigger, let the hammer down, and keeping the trigger pinned to the rear. Using the small end of the Allen wrench, I can get in behind that trigger. I'm going to turn this Allen wrench or this Allen screw that's in the pre-travel adjustment. We're going to turn that to the right to run it out just a little ways. And you can go from one side of the frame to the other, and then grab it again. That's to test if I have um, adjusted that screw a little bit too much, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly release the trigger, and we're going to listen for the click. I still have a little bit of wink. You can see the trigger bar is moving just a little bit before it engages the hammer, so I can go a little bit further. What we're looking for is for the trigger bar to not re-engage that hammer. So we'll let it out slowly. Got a click, go a little bit more, we'll release the trigger slowly. We don't get uh, the gun to reset. 
so the trigger bar is not slipping back behind the hammer anymore. Now we'll back that screw off slowly. So I was going about two turns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go one turn now. Still no re-engagement. We'll do another one. We got it re-engaged. And now when I pull on the uh, trigger, there's no movement before it connects with the hammer. Now to make sure the gun always uh, resets, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do about half the distance from frame to about the center line, just a little bit past it, I guess. We want just a little bit of wink in the trigger bar to make sure that the gun always resets. Now with the trigger adjusted properly, we can go ahead and reinstall the, um, the locking insert. We'll ensure that the, uh, your trigger pivot pin um, is in the right position. Mine actually rotated quite a bit on that last one, so I'll need to turn it about 180 degrees. And those slots are now facing down. I'm gonna hold the slide stop over to the left and reinstall the locking insert. Make sure that locking insert is pulled all the way to the rear. Reinstall our takedown lever. And then we can reinstall the slide for a function test. Point the gun in a safe direction. I'm going to pull the trigger. Keeping the trigger pinned to the rear. Rack the slide, check reset. We'll check double action. Feels great. Gun always resets, even if we let the trigger out very slowly and very carefully. So if it catches on anything or if it wants to hang up, that trigger bar will still push it over and it resets. Now we'll reinstall the grips. And we're done. That, my friends, is a P229 ELS install. Um, we've got gray guns. We have two different types of triggers currently. We're working on a third. Um, the one I just uninstalled and reinstalled is the uh, the hybrid ELS trigger. Um, it's straight. However, it's a little bit of curve in there. Uh, that is for ease of use for double action. It shortens up the length of pull just a little bit, not as much as a curved would. Uh, but it's really comfortable in the double action pull and it still breaks about 90. Our other trigger, um, the ELS straight. Now this one is just your standard straight trigger. It breaks at 90. Um, it's a little bit longer length of pull. For me, it's a little bit more uncomfortable. I do prefer the ELS hybrid. Um, that's just, I prefer that hybrid uh, trigger shape over the straight uh, in just about every single firearm. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. CSR at grayguns.com. Uh, you can go on the website, check our parts out. I hope this helped. Thank you.